walk into the nearest store. We return to the action. Welcome back. As we go into that particular issue we wanted to discuss. And um, that will take us uh, for the next, uh, what, how many minutes now? Uh, we've got precious little time, so we better get to it. I'd asked you earlier on if you could guess who we have in the studio. Here's, here's a guy who's, um, you know, he, he used to be, he used to be one of Nigeria Info's finest. He's also, he's also one of the most famous Newcastle fans in Nigeria. If, if, you, if you can guess, 0700 993 993 993. Let's see if anybody could hazard that guess. 
0700-993-993-993. And somebody would, would take, somebody would take the bait. Let's see what they do. Hi there. Good evening to you. Hello. Yes, please. Good evening, Sammy. Good evening. How are you doing? I'm fine. My name is David. Who's my guest? Uh, I guess it should be Ginga Borua. What? What? Why? Why would you? Why would your mind even go there? <laughs> so that's the person, that's the clue that came to my mind now. Okay, well done. Thank you very much. Very, very much appreciated. So let's say welcome to our guest, Benga Borowa is in the house. No need to flog it. Benga, how are you doing? Thank you very much, uh, Fabi. It's a pleasure to be back here. All right. Uh, great great uh, pleasure, man. Yeah, like, been, when was the last time you were in this studio, man? Maybe four years ago. Wow. Yes. Like four years ago already? Yes. <laughs> Still like I yesterday spent, for I, me. I spent five years of my professional career. Nigerian phone and the cool ones of your family is always is special. Mm. I would always be home. Yes. Fantastic, Benga. Uh, long time. Now, for you these days, it's all about television. I think, is that your face? <laughs> you know? Yes. <laughs> uh, radio misses the voice, though. Um, and I've, I've always thought this, this was, you know, some voices, uh, uh, you know, I, I just made for radio. And, 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 and you have one such voice. I, I kind of miss radio. Radio is less stressful. I could wear jeans and t-shirts, but I have to wear suits all the time mm -hmm. and uh, makeup and all of that. So radio is just... And I think the fans on radio are more loyal than TV. Yeah. Yeah, the, the kind of. listeners. There's also that mysticism. Of course, uh, radio has changed these days. There is, mm -hmm. I mean, we, we are... We are live on social media, by the way. Uh, live on Facebook, yep. Nigeria Info 99.3. So you can see us. So um, th that part of radio, unfortunately, is going down the drain. Uh, back in the day, uh, people had to imagine what you looked like. Uh, these days, they know you. They see you. Yeah. <laughs> so there's the good side to it. It's, it's more like uh, some subtle competition for television. But, uh, you, know, it's, it's not, you know, it's different. The downside is you lose that aura of uh invisibility that mysticism that yeah. mysticism goes away i bring up pleasure pleasure having you in the studio i'm again, absolutely also. delighted to be here and thanks for the invite yes and you were the newcastle fan where nobody cared about newcastle Yes, and uh, look at how life happens. And uh, there's so many lessons to learn from this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're 19th yeah. on the table. <laughs> People are like, why are you supporting that useless club? You guys never win anything. And look at us now with the big boys in town. Richest club in the world. Uh, how many um, Nigerian friends do you have that are Newcastle fans? Uh, quite a few. And we actually Who are based have here, a, not, not friends you made outside of Nigeria. So I made. Fr we have a Newcastle United Nigeria uh, WhatsApp group. Mm. And we do know that, you know, all these fickle fans will start joining us now. The same thing that happened to uh, City. So we're like, we're when, not when taking did, any when, members. When, when did you open the group? Uh, like two years ago. Like two years ago? Yes. Okay. Oh, fantastic. By the way, we, we, before we go there, let, let, me, well, let me welcome the Agbede, uh, Wale Agbede in, in the house. You know him so very well. And most of you, uh, you catch him in one of our... Uh, our friends and uh, sister stations because we are all one family and t you know you, you follow his show on top radio uh, content and PR guy all around broadcaster writer radio and television uh, guy uh, Wally thanks for joining us huh? thank you very much for me uh, it's, it's a privilege to you know just sit in the same studio with you the pleasure is all mine now, <laughs> as, as, as uh, Benga sits here and you know they've not won anything yet too but as he sits down there and begins to gloat mm -hmm. let's go let's go into the issue again and we're looking at the dy the dynamics and i'd like to look at it because we've had multiple conversations about the dynamics for premier league football the dynamics for world football for club football and all of that um but i i think benga gives a perspective how does the fan see it uh and those who know the story this whole thing started in april i think April of this year, when we first heard that a consortium of companies were going to take over um, Newcastle. It was a big deal at the time. It was eventually scuttled. I think... Last year. Was it last year? It was, it was last April year. of yeah. last year, yeah? Yes. Not this year. It was, April, it was actually last year. And um, after a while, um, some members of the English Parliament even, you know, were trying to get the government... This, um, all talk... Um, 
about this consortium, uh, the bulk of them coming from Saudi, Ar Saudi Arabia and all of that. Uh, new terms were coined. What do they call it now? <laughs> Is it ball washing or sports or, washing? Or sport washing. Spot washing yeah. uh, was being thrown there. Um, um, a lot of talk about you know, the Saudis needing um, needing um, to get one of the to get a club in perhaps well in arguably the biggest league in in uh, club football uh, and you know that went round and round and round. Eventually, that deal was called off. We were told that the deal had been called off. I, I think when that deal. When we were told that that deal was called off was um this was hmm let me see i'm just checking the facts um yes in july an announcement was made from saudi arabia that they were withdrawing from the newcastle hmm. deal uh, they said well with deep with a deep appreciation for the newcastle community and the significance of its football club We've come to the decision to withdraw our interest in acquiring Newcastle United Football Club. They also stated that the prolonged process was a major factor in that decision. So, it collapsed. Widespread criticism followed from the fans. Newcastle fans didn't care. They needed something. Something. And, and, and they didn't care whether it was coming from Russia, from China, from Saudi Arabia, or from Nigeria for that matter. Um... And then in September, all of that changed, uh, and we were back with uh, with investment, uh, public investment fund PCP Capital Partners, and of course RB Sports and media confirming that the deal had been done. This time there was no plenty talk, no time for back and forth. It had been sealed. We only heard the announcement. Exciting times for all Newcastle fans all over the world. I've been supporting uh, Newcastle United since 1998. So, mm. I, I mean, apart from the few times we played in the Champions League, this has to be uh, the most exciting time in the history of our club. And it's That's not 23 just... 23 years. It's not just because we're the richest club in the world. Uh, Newcastle... Uh, St. Like, James's Park you know, sells 50,000, <laughs> an average of 50,000 fans, the cathedral, St. James's Park, every weekend. They're loyal and they stay through. We, I, I've been there, we've been relegated twice in that uh, 23 years and I've stayed true uh, to the course. We play exciting, fantastic football. There was a time they used to call us uh, the entertainers. We have flair players like Ben Arfa, Ginola, uh, Laurent Robert. And uh, I remember playing in Turin. We lost our first three games. We were in the same group with Feyenoord and Juve. Uh, so, um, I think in the early 2000s. And we still qualified for the second round. So, it's not about just winning trophies. It's the few games. I remember Chelsea, um, Newcastle, Papi Cisse, that <laughs> impossible goal. I think that was uh, the Arsenal. late, The late... Uh, yeah. No, no. Then the late okay. Czech Tiltes goal. Uh, against the Arsenal, against Arsenal. Against yeah. Arsenal. So we've we've, we've been the, quite the, a decent club. Those were classics, weren't they? Mm. I mean, the the, the the Arsenal game was just some different uh, yes. level of glorious, from three, massive from three goals down. Yes, and then we used to be at par with, let's say, Tottenham, who were better than Leicester, way above West Ham. And then Mike Ashley just took us a few steps back. He was a very crude businessman. He didn't invest in the club. Uh, you leave my, <laughs> Mike Ashley for now. <laughs> but Wally, did you for one second think you would live to see the day when Benga Borowa or somebody, <laughs> someone else in with white and blue stripes will come before the mic and say we are the, uh, some other Newcastle fan, manager or player, will say we are the richest club in the world? Well, um, I, I still find it strange because they are not the richest club in the world. Um, <laughs> it's the club with the richest owners in the world. <laughs> what does that mean? It's no, the, no, we're the richest club so, in the world. So there are, there, are, there are two different things, right? Uh, because there are, there are so many examples. Um, Fahad Moshiri, the owner of Everton, is an extremely rich guy. So he can't um, be he as rich as no, no, I'm, I'm not comparing the Saudi him, investment. I'm not comparing to the owners of, of Newcastle. I'm saying his, his worth right, oh, doesn't yes. equate the worth of Everton Football Club. Um, with AS Monaco, they had a rich owner also a few years ago when they brought in Falcao and the likes. After a year, we, we saw what happened, right? So again, I, I still have a little bit of um, 
Circumspection. Uh, just yeah, give it, you know, just give it to us. No, 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 no I, I'm, I'm actually really happy. I'm really <laughs> happy. To drive that. I, I'm really happy for Newcastle. Fans. You know, I need you, Wiley, to hold that thought. We'll All be right. right back after this.
the what was the attraction now if I ask Benga, Benga will probably say, but, uh, you know, real some history about Newcastle. I don't know much about that. Uh, there are other conversations too. In fact, there are words that perhaps maybe uh, some, some of the top four, top five clubs could probably have been a first choice if they were available. But it doesn't matter. The, pro the, the, real, uh, the real fact is there was a time when City was just that noisy neighbour. And look at City today. Uh, and now it's Newcastle. The question then becomes, how does this affect the balance of football? Um, w even the top four no longer is, exists in, in Premier League football now. Yeah. We are what? Top six, six now? Where do we go from here? I, 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 I don't know. How does it affect the balance? How and what's going to happen? Something tells me we may see, we may, we may not, we may begin to see Newcastle in the Champions League soon. Meaning some big team is going to drop out of it. Uh, Liverpool, Man United, Arsenal, Chelsea. Arsenal are not there. Arsenal are not there right now. Liverpool. So, let, so, so the... And it's hmm. not such a strange thing to think because uh, you sound like, you know, we're going to see Newcastle in the Champions League. We played Champions League football for like two or three seasons on the side of Bobby Robson in the early 2000s. Yeah. That's not yeah, so far and, away. And, and didn't yeah. Birmingham, who won it? <laughs> Who won the Champions League for me? <laughs> you know, I, 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 I understand. But to be back at this level in 2021, uh, where it's become the exclusive reserve of a few clubs, um, this is big. You do have one issue, though, uh, escaping relegation this season. Uh, just nine games played, 30, 29 more games. So we'll survive. And uh, we have a world-class coach. <laughs> lined up we you know money stops nonsense where you have money you have you have a whole choice to make so the, the names that have been uh put up the zidane there's steven jared so we could uh there's antonio so, conte so, so let's shift through all the noise yes. uh wally who's the most likely as we stand as of today of this manager the ajax manager um eric ten Hag. yes Eric Ten Hag is, is now, you know, the latest name being bandied about. But who looks who looks the most likely? Well, I think pretty much any half decent manager in the world. And I say that because um, everybody... <laughs> I, so, at, at this point... Well, he put some respect on our name. We're Newcastle no, 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 United. No, no. Let, let me tell you why I say this. I say this because right now, everybody knows that, you know, for instance, there's a January transfer with the comment. Mm -hmm. There's a high likelihood that the owners will be splashing a lot of cash, yeah. right? This season, and maybe next season, will be an opportunity for managers to either do really well in Newcastle, right? Who would be more willing to take a risk mm -hmm. right now than, you know, and either do well or not do well. But there's the opportunity to take a risk. Now, with Newcastle, I don't think the world-class proven managers will go to Newcastle. Newcastle you because just yet. for them, it's a risk, right? Uh, the likes of Zidane. If Zidane goes to Newcastle, I'll be surprised. Right, if maybe a manager in the caliber of uh, Antonio Conte goes to Newcastle, I'll be surprised. So, there's a lower class of managers who aren't bad managers, right? Like he mentioned, Paulo Fonseca, who's a really good manager. You know, there are managers go to Italy, you said, Francesco, you know, Eric Ten Hag, like we mentioned already. These are managers who will see the opportunity, right, to go to a club that have really great history but non existent present, right, and try to make something out of it because it will be a whole lot more interesting for a manager on his CV if he goes to Newcastle now and then maybe, you know, stays up this season and the next season is competing for European places, you know. May, 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 may I, if you may, play the devil's advocate? You and I are Real Madrid fans and I'm just going to take one of those coaches, Zinedine Zidane, for whom I have a great deal of respect. There's a manager who won the Champions League back to back to back, no mean feat. I think beyond that, there's little else to say about Zinedine Zidane. And, and, and I, I hesitate to name him in much the same breath as a Pep Guardiola, um, again, you, you know, you could argue that. I disagree. Uh, you, could, you could argue that, heck, he, he won the Champions League back to back to back. Um, but then um, with a Real Madrid team that was primed to sweep the stakes, I think Real Madrid were primed to sweep the stakes. And I think it also happened at a time when some of the other big teams were in some sort of a strange decline? I don't, 
And maybe, maybe, maybe I'm being too harsh, harsh and, and too critical. But for for instance, I, I thought the, the third of the three of the three Champions League was I, I just couldn't understand it. I, th I thought it was a bad ad advertisement for football because <laughs> Madrid were really crappy that season, and and I, I literally feel they strolled to a trophy when they were not half as good as as they could potentially be. I agree with you, Mr. Femi. Let me quickly jump in. Um, mm. I think he knows his strength. He mm -hmm. knows his ability. Talking about Zidane himself. And I'm not surprised that he has not jumped at offers that are just near anywhere around. He was quick to distance himself. Well, well you've won the Champions League back to back well, to back. Yeah. yeah. He, he's moved himself away from the Man United job because he knows anyone going there will have to work hard. It's pressure cooker. The, the secret at Real Madrid was he formed a very tight relationship with the big stars. And it worked. It worked and they, were, they ran into the ground for him. They dug in for him. In terms of play, they were not fantastic. I mean, Madrid were dogged. They had to break Salah's arm to win the 2018 Champions League. They were rugged. They had everything. And for Zidane now, Newcastle is not for him. Maybe PSG, star-studded club. And he also will be waiting for Didier Deschamps to say, I'm tired of the Le Blue. And then he packs his bag, he goes there. So for Zidane, I agree with you. I don't think he's that kind of manager that wants to start an agricultural farm. Mm -hmm. Someone that could just wait for that moment where a team is in their prime then maybe some, some, a place like Man United could fit him where you have big names Paul Pobas of this world Rafael Varane you're having Cristiano Ronaldo just go there form that tight bond with them and he's not the one that will improve players Rodrigo was horrible last season under his belt Vinicius Junior were horrible Carlo Ancelotti has come on but exposed those weak points everyone is, has seen that there's more to Vinicius and Rodrigo than what we had last season. So I think I like the fact that he's covered himself in glory a little bit, not coming to the Express to show himself, waiting for the right job to come so he could just pounce on it. Hmm. I, I like where this conversation is going. I mean, it's, all these points are really arguable uh, when we look at it. Uh, Benga, you are the fan. Would you go for a Zinedine Zidane at this time? Okay, um, I'd like to set the record straight. Bearing in on mind this. what, what no, he no, said. No. Uh, just a quick one. We're being realistic here. Mm -hmm. Okay, the money just came in. We have new owners. It's exciting times. But we don't hope to win any trophy in the next two, three, four years, even. We understand that you build from bottom up. So just get a decent. Our priority right now is to survive because we've not won a single game this season. We're second to the bottom team in the Premier League. So it's get someone like Paulo Fonseca. He's had uh, a good record with Roma and Shakhtar Donetsk. He's a very charismatic uh, manager and he would get the best out of uh, the average players, a lot of average players uh, that we have before the January transfers uh, open. And you know what happens when you get a new manager? There's extra impetus from the players. Uh, they want to prove themselves. And you, everybody, it's exciting times in the northeast of England. So uh, a Zidane will be, I, I don't even want a Zidane, will be out of the picture for now. So let's see what happens. I'm sure an announcement will be made in the next two weeks. So this talk, would you put much premium to it? Because, you know, it's coming from um, uh, some, you know, usually reliable sources uh, that the owners of Newcastle would be willing to go as high as a gross of 11 million pounds uh, to, to get the Ajax man. Um, if, if that were to sail through, would you recommend that at this point? We remember too, one thing is certain. The, the manager that will go to Newcastle now will not be under immediate pressure. This is a, re, this is a time for rebuilding. Yeah, but again, honestly, I don't think that I'll go for Eric Hag, And I'll tell you why. I think that for a club like Newcastle, in the present state they're in right now, I think they, they need a manager who has managed at a considerably high level, mm -hmm. but isn't necessarily all about you know tactics and trying to play a certain style. I don't think that's what they need. And I think that's where Eric Ten Hag is right now. I think they need someone with personality. Someone who can come into the club and bring back that aura of you know success that used to be associated with Newcastle. So when that culture starts to spread around the club, right? And then of course new players who also share that kind of you know who have those those kind of personalities who share in those you know winning ideas when they start coming in you know in like you said mm. two three seasons then you can start thinking of managers 
who will tinker and make those players work and start winning titles. So I don't I don't I don't see Harry Ten, Ten Hag right now. Mm-hmm. I see so for instance with Paris Saint Germain, right? When the Qatari guys came, it was Laurent Blanc. Laurent Blanc wasn't necessarily the best manager around, right? But he he did, you know, he, he didn't win the, the league when they first came in. And then it was Carlo Ancelotti and, and of course they built on from there. Now any top manager would like to go to Paris Saint Germain. You go to Man City, when the Thai Prime Minister first came mm. in 2008, Shinawatra, it was Sven Goran Eriksson, mm-hmm. right? Mm. Eriksson, not the best manager around at the mm-hmm. time, but a manager who had, you know, done it at the very high level. Had a name. Had and a whose, whose yeah. level, very importantly, was higher than that of the players at the time. Because at the time, it was Benjamin Wariwari and Robinho and the likes. You know, then after that, Roberto Mancini, who had just won the league title in Italy. And then, of course, built on from there up until where we are right now. So, I understand the um, eagerness to try to get the, you know, interesting managers. You know, Eric Ten Hag, you want to bring in Fonseca and the likes. But I think that they should be a little bit more pragmatic. And first of all, try to build a culture, a culture of winning around the club. Build a culture of, of players who, if I can, you know, a, a culture of a winning mentality. I was going to use a word that, yeah. you mm. know, may, maybe I shouldn't use. And then after that, in two, three, four years, then we can start looking for looking for all these enterprising managers. And also in that period, I think it's give them a chance to decide as a club, as mm. an institution, yeah. how they want to move forward. Do we want to rely on young players? Do we want to rely on strictly buying, you know, world stars? Do we want to rely on playing a particular system? What type of system do we want to be associated with? It will give them time to, to grow into it and then they can now decide who is the manager that's going to deliver this for us. Mm. The village people, the powers and principalities that have been holding us down, Bruce and Ashley are out. So it's just... Well, quickly, uh, quickly, Mr. We're Frank. happy. Uh, um, I think um, <laughs> we've, we've talked about uh, recruitment of players. Mm-hmm. Um, Amanda, she's the face of the club. Uh, I think she started this movement way back 2017, December. She met went f- first. Of, uh, uh, she met with Ashley. Ashley said, "You're not serious. You look to me like uh, a frost or something like that." <laughs> she had to go in for partner. She met with the Saudi guys. She got. She's got connect. She's got everything. It started way back, and um, she has to first of all, they have to uh, employ a director of football, a sporting mm. director, because these guys will have to determine how the club will go, the complexion of Newcastle, the color of the club, and that will now trickle down to who they will employ to be that global scouting network because they will have to expand not just yeah newcastle are quite big in geographically they'll have to expand the you know, scouting network who are they bringing into the club because for amanda now i don't think they're rushing anything from what we've seen i mean they allowed bruce to just take over that 1000 game and they're taking their time to look for identify first of all they'll have to identify uh you know the next manager and then sit down and look for who will be the Director of football, because whatever deci- decision is taken in the board will trickle down to what happens in the field of play. So for Amanda, she's got a lot, a lot in her hands, and I hope that she's got great advisors now that can help her do that. So, how does it change things? First, I'm, I'm thinking off the top of my head, any Newcastle great who could be thrown in the mix? Absolutely. Of coaching at this time, who has character, who has a record behind him? Alan Shearer. Alan Shearer. But mm. but very precious little pedigree in terms of coaching. I, I had the ambassador role, mm. probably some some sort of face of the club that can connect the fans, disgruntled because they've been sad for many years. Connect the fans and of course the owners, forge that good relationship. And then I also heard that their former coach Kevin Keegan, who also had mm. a fair a good spell uh, yeah. back in the day. Yeah, yeah. so Kevin they've Keegan. connected with. Also, I think they have people they can call up to for advice. Yeah. So let's look at the, the most the highest paid um, managers now in Premier League football. Pep Guardiola is the highest on twenty million per in the Premier League. The Premier League. Okay. It's Pep twenty. Pep is twenty million yeah. pounds yeah. annually. Yeah. Twenty million annually. Yeah. Uh, Klopp is second. Yeah, 15, Fifteen million absolutely. annually. Um, you know, and, and then there is talk talk that you know. Uh, uh, for for the for this um, guy for Ten Hag, um, they are willing to to do eleven. Um, how would that? I, I'm looking at it. You know, money talks in football right now, uh, but at this time when the results are not there yet to match it, um, the, the owners of the club have deep pockets, and I like the fact that Wally. Co- uh, you know, made that clear to you is that like, the <laughs> fact that your owner has money does not mean you have money. <laughs> Uh, well, again, again, you know, 
It depends on I, how I don't you know, look it's, at it. it. It's yeah. a debatable argument. Huh? Um, but looking at it now, and you bring this guy, whoever comes in, maybe a Zidane, maybe a Conte. Um, you know, I, I think the Conte talk is uh, dissipating slightly now. I'm not sure. Mm. Uh, mm. You bring any of these guys, if you get a high-profile guy, the high-profile guy will want high-profile money because, again, it's got to be worth his while. Yeah? So... And he has that power to attract players yes. who want to come to Newcastle. Yes. So that's another thing to look at. Mm. Uh, ability to attract big players. And, and these guys are sitting down wondering, what do we do in the next two years? How do we get, or two, three years, how do we get to where we need to be? And all of that. Th that there's developmental issues. There's also the political angle, which is which I would like to reserve for part two. Uh, for part two. Again, the dynamics of it. If, it's if it's any a lot of hypocrisy and jealousy. Yes. Yeah. I agree with you. Yes. So well, well, the, well, it's the, football anything without full hypocrisy or jealousy? I yeah. Mean, mm. Well, mo most things in this in today's world are full, you know, riddled with hypocrisy and 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 all of that. But again. You look at it and ask yourself, we, we are, aren't we going to get to a point where anybody who is anybody, uh, for, for instance, just imagine that King Jong-un has the money to buy a Premier League club, I'm just saying, it's you know? <laughs> Again, at that point, we would say it's hypocrisy and jealousy or we would be genuinely worried. I mean, if well, he passes the director's <laughs> test, the only reason why Newcastle, why uh, uh, the Saudis didn't buy Newcastle last year was because of the diplomatic spat between Qatar and uh, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia over yeah. Bain Sports, uh, TV rights and all of that. TV and then they, they settled and, it. And, and, and the then the human rights thing came later. I mean, people just want to play football and have fun. Leave the politics for politicians. <laughs> last week, Sunday... There was an F1 Grand Prix in uh, Austin, Texas. Aramco sponsored it. Saudi's old company pl plastered everywhere. Nobody talked about human rights. All of a sudden, you want to discuss human rights. Britain, British Aerospace Systems, they sell weapons to the Saudis, what, billions of pounds every year. Nobody's talking human rights when it comes to that. But just because uh, long-suffering Newcastle fans <laughs> have a lease of hope, and the big six are challenged. They don't want anybody in their in their cabal. Would you say the exact same thing if they had bought Arsenal? Uh, they're already in the big six, so it's just yeah. Okay. No, I, I like. Can it. I, can I, I say know, something? Because I, I, I find it. I find it. I find. We can go on and on about who is right and who is wrong, who has done what or who has not done what. But at the end of the day, I do not think that you get to do anything you want anywhere in the world and then because foot, let's let's let, let's not forget this football is the most popular sport in the world mm -hmm. and the premier league is as good as it gets billions of fans it's the easiest way to clean up your image billions of fans There's, billions of funds <laughs> billions of fans and which translates to billions of funds mm -hmm. as you say now any Bologna, it, there's a reason why Bologna's all around the world look to the Premier League. Dangote is rich in Nigeria, but he went all the way, went past Italy, went past France, went past Spain, went all the way to England to look, to, to prospect for a club to buy. There's a reason why, because the most eyes are there. And if you wanted to clean up your image, it's easy. Let's not, let's not discount the role of Manchester City and the City Football Group in cleaning up the image of the Qataris. Hmm. The Abu Dhabi, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the Emirates, the, uh, rather, confuse them a lot. <laughs> so, the Emirates, you know, because for, for the past 10 years, we've been going on about how the human rights abuses and you, the shady manner in which they got to host the World Cup. Mm -hmm. But it, it just went under the radar because, you know, they were systematically using City and all these club acquisitions in the 10 years since to, you know, dull down the noise give people happiness and let them not talk too much about um what they are doing wrong so we really need to have discussions around this thing it, it's it's it, it might seem like oh we are beefing mm -hmm. newcastle as it were <clears throat> but it, it's not the case as, as as it is so so let me get your perspective wiley again you know a lot has changed in the last year 
um, COVID changed a lot. Um, some things that that would have been sacrilegious before uh, almost allowed now. In fact, governments these days are allowed to interfere with football in a way, uh, you know, they would not have been allowed to. Yeah. But, but realistically, there, there is a real potential here for governments around the world, rogue regimes around the world. And I don't like to come before the microphone and discuss politics. I leave that to um, uh, uh, Sheriff uh, Quadri uh, and, and my good Egbon, Jimmy Disu, and, and, and the indomitable Sandra and, and, uh, and, and, and these people who... Um, but should we be worried if potentially... Any government anywhere with the right amount of resources could put a consortium of businesses together and buy any top club in the world. So the thing is, um, this has a very long history, right? Um, and I always, I always like to tell people that in 1992, when the Premier League was revived, right, it stopped to be to be just football. It became a product, mm. right? And what do products do? They attract people who can buy them now as va as value of certain products increase right the demography of those who can afford it continues to change right from you know maybe it's 10 naira for instance there's like 1 billion people can pay for it then it goes to 100 naira then there's like 100 million people then it goes to 1000 naira then there's like 10000 people so right now football the premier league especially has grown so much in value that the demography of those who can afford to invest in it it's really thin. Mm. And the people in that demography are governments, billionaires, oil magnates, and the likes. So, again, when you when when it, the, the league transcends from just being a sport to being a product, then this is expected. Should we be worried if, I mean, for, for real, you know, real purists of the game, of course, they will be worried, right? But football as it is today, the passion, that we enjoy from the game. The reason why we're here tonight, right, is driven by the monies spent by these guys. Mm. If you take away these guys, if you take away these monies, football becomes less of what it is today. So, is is actually a poison chalice as a topic to discuss because there, there's pros and there's cons, right? Because look, Rush, uh, Roman Abramovich, I was just saying off the air, right, came in 2003, bought yeah. Chelsea. But there's a political story to it. Again, we shouldn't go into all of the politics, right? Mm -hmm. But, you know, he, 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 he has managed to launder his image so much that just mentioning the name in almost every corner of the world, you know who he is. But before then, he was actually embattled in Russia. Mm -hmm. A lot of the oligarchs, all oligarchs who made money in Russia before Vladimir Putin became president, a lot of them are nowhere to be found. You know, we know what happened to yeah. them, right? Yeah. So, when we talk about image laundering with government, Roman Abramovich is an individual, right? But we could also represent it as somebody who is laundering his image because of his attachment to a government. Mm. We go to China with, with wolves, for instance, right? There, there's links to China, of course. Of course, they've marked it. They've mar instance, yeah, they've so marked it with Jorge Mendes and, of course, you go to Valencia with Peter Lim and these things is widespread in football. The reason why Benga is talking about hypocrisy is because we see this thing every day. But when is Qatar with PSG or Abu Dhabi with Manchester City or um, Saudi Arabia now with Newcastle, mm -hmm. then it becomes noise. Football should be worried because the sport in itself is dying. Mm -hmm. But the sport as a product, honestly, is blossoming. Good blossoming. Lord. It's also sad. Uh, that, that, you know, th mm -hmm. that, that is pretty deep. Um, it's it's also it? sad that um, fans um, of clubs that are yet to have a rich owner will have to maybe be hopeful of their own sugar daddy days because as it stands now i used that word <laughs> last time we were here yeah that newcastle have a new sugar daddy and that we're getting towards a situation where every fan southampton fan um uh maybe brighton fans mm. will wait for their own sugar daddies to come but for but them to be able to you know rub their shoulders with the rest of the counterpart in the EPL because let's let city defy the odds and won the Premier League. yeah without I think and that's still that's competing. one and that's, and still well, that's one over one thousand it doesn't just happen all the time, maybe once in a century. But competing, where are they? At the end of the day, the top four still knock them off, given the fact that they buy more players. In fact, Newcastle is a breeding ground. There are some That's who would even argue that uh, um, Leicester City's success... Rich an anomaly. Well, you know, you know, not just an anomaly. Rich, rich, it was... It was, sugar it was you know, there was some, <laughs> there was some Thai money somewhere there. Yeah, but nothing close to the monies that we're talking about. Yes, so most, most certainly. <laughs> money is money, isn't it? Yeah, but, but, but just... it makes a strong point. Yeah. Just to add quickly, uh, to butcher what she's saying. 
So, like I said, there are purists, right? But what kind of fans are we bridging today? Chelsea, for instance, right? They have a lot of fans worldwide. How many of them were Chelsea fans before Roman Abramovich? Mm. So, those Chelsea fans, the football they know is football that is built on spending money. Mm. Mm. Do you understand? Yeah. Those are not football purists in the sense of having an attachment to a club in, in terms of his culture, his relationship with the environment. Please hold like that, that thought. We'll be back for a I quick short break. And I'll be wife. And I But with Daisy, and you know the
and anticipated that conversation will be had in the nine o'clock hour sam has got that covered uh, in the meantime it's time to hear from you guys we've been breaking this conversation like big time uh, and I, I i came here with some of the best minds uh, uh, to join uh, Adeze, sam uh david uh, myself and okwe who who's uh, trying to make who's uh, at the background trying to ensure um you hear us and you hear us pretty well um wali agbede is here the wali agbede i always like to put that article he's the because uh, he's the real deal and uh, of course um friend brother all-round great guy uh Benga aborowa who is himself is one of two or three Newcastle fans in Nigeria. <laughs> <laughs> At least for now. Um, how many of you are in your WhatsApp group, by the way? Uh, let me just check to give you an accurate. Uh, yeah, well, I'd like. I'll be interested to know how many joined in the last one month. We've not taken any new members. Okay, fantastic. Um, and we're trying to register with the Corporate Affairs Commission. Okay, that would be nice. That would be really nice. Wale, Wale, what's up with Real Madrid fans club in Nigeria? I don't know if you understand. I'm actually not a Real fan. I'm wearing a Real jersey. But what is wrong with you? Uh, I, <laughs> oh, I, I do that all the time too. So, so our jerseys are almost every club. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I like that. I like you. We're 10. Uh, I like you. I don't like... You people are 10. Yes. Okay, well done. It used to be 2 or 3. That, that, that's also much from 3. Yeah. But that's too much 10 and 3. But it's good. That was the time I used to like Liverpool just because there were 2 or 3 Liverpool fans <laughs> in the country. Um... <laughs> So, you guys can join this conversation. That's 0700-993-993-993. Um, Wally did make a very good point. How close United came to being owned by Mama Gaddafi. Yeah, former uh, Supreme, Supreme Brotherly Leader of Ida. Libya. Yes. Of, of, he said he should call him president. <laughs> of, lead, of Libya. Libya. Uh, leader of Libya. Um... Well, you said that deal was 95% done. Yeah, it was almost done. And there was just some haggling over like £2 million. Yeah, this is the reason yeah. why Muammar Gaddafi doesn't own United today. And then he eventually went to Italy. Um, I don't know if a lot of people know. Uh, yeah. He, he bought he bought uh, Perugia. He yeah, bought Perugia. Yeah, he, he bought Perugia. Um, he got into... And, and then he, he, his son then had to become a footballer for... Even though he couldn't... Oh, there, there's actually a lot of politics relating to his son becoming a footballer. Become a footballer. Because mm. when his son went to uh, Perugia... Mm. Gaddafi and the then Italian Prime Minister, Silvio Berlusconi. Berlusconi. A lot of people know him. Yeah. He used to be president of AC Milan. Uh, Berlusconi used to call the owner of Perugia to tell the manager to always play Muammar Gaddafi because, of course, Italy and Libya were doing some you know, business. Yeah. So politics and, and football have mixed since before people like us were born. But like you said, we should be worried. Yeah, we should. Be Big because, time. yeah, we... we it was, I think, uh, this deal, it was, in fact, it was almost dead. We were talking the Newcastle, maybe you wouldn't have been here mm. in our studio. It was Boris Johnson that got involved. Mm -hmm. Had a meeting with Richard Massa. I said, hey, sit down. I've got a tie, personal tie with the Saudi uh, leader. He's a young guy. He brings business. UK, we must maintain that tie. They sat down. Richard said, okay, I'm going to do everything I can. So that is how this bid was, you know, rebirthed again. And then he sat down. They began to go back to Qatar to make peace with the Paris deal and all that. If Boris Johnson didn't have that meeting with Richard Masters, who is the CEO of the Premier League, I don't think that deal would have come. So politics absolutely was the reason why Newcastle, uh, you know, why they just... Because everything happened so fast. Mm. He was dead and then he came back. Within a few days, they were just by... Next thing we heard, Amanda is but, granting but, but, interviews. But some would argue that it was politics that killed it in the first place. And yes, the same politics. Definitely. Boris Johnson back. came well, back in it. Said, and I need Newcastle, to easy come, Newcastle easy uh, fans also pressured uh, their local MP to raise a point that this is unfair. Why shouldn't this deal go through? But it's nice to always have uh, the prime ministers so back into. Would it be safe to say it's it's this 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 is the whole affair is a deal born of politics, almost almost crushed by politics. And then resuscitated by politics. Just yes, be a sugar daddy with a yes. lot of money. Is, is, is yes, that a reasonable yes, assessment? Yes, yes, yes. There's a lot of angles uh, in which you can say that is true. There's the image laundering angle. Mm -hmm. There's the money cleaning angle. There's, I mean, what happened with with being sports where there was a pirate satellite provider in Sa Saudi Arabia mm -hmm. that was tapping being sports signals, and that thing had been on for twenty something years. Hmm. But because they had to get a club to clean up their image, seeing what was going on in Yemen, 
they they kill that network so i mean it, it tells you that almost nothing is possible when politics wants wants it to to, to be I, I don't think there will be so much eyeballs and politics if it wasn't that it was a government sovereign wealth fund investment arm mm. that bought newcastle if it was some private business man for example uh we won't be raising all this dust but people should look at newcastle as <laughs> an investment of the saudi citizens ordinary saudis because it doesn't no. belong to mohammed no. bin salman no no it no. doesn't belong to mohammed no. bin salman no. it doesn't yeah. belong to so the idea be- behind the sovereign wealth fund is saudi is looking beyond oil True. the world is looking at renewable energy there won't be oil anymore in in 50 years time you would have to drink your oil so they're looking beyond that it's a business decision so, so let's but, leave but, the politics but, but, but the question out of it the question being guys is are clubs actually you know are they not in the red clubs um, almost yeah. all these clubs are, are mm. in debt mm. so it's actually a viable business i don't mm. think it's about money interesting i wonder what you think at home 0700 993 993 993 if you are a lady uh, and you just want to be a part of this conversation, uh, you might want to call our 0146571190 number. 0146571190. That's one more time for the ladies. 0146571190. Let's go straight to the phone lines and hear from you guys. Hi there. Good evening to you. Yikes. That won't fly. Um, because, I mean, we could go all night about this topic. Hi there. Talk to me. Okay, uh, we'll keep trying. Uh, hello, how are you doing? Uh, good evening. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Thank you. I, I want to know if Master you know, has their manager. That's what I call. No, they haven't. They haven't. <laughs> no, they haven't. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Hi there. Good evening. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Good evening. Good evening to you. Welcome. Yeah. Yeah, let's. Name is Your name is Esther. Esther. So Esther, um, uh, tell me, uh, are you worried about this whole Newcastle, uh, Saudi Arabia money uh, in football? Do you think football is in trouble, or do you think it's good? Football is good. Okay. Yeah, so f- it's very very fantastic game I ever like. Okay. For me, football is good. Football is good, and you couldn't be, yeah. you couldn't care less who who is spending the money, who is buying the club. They should just put the money and let's enjoy the game, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Really, really appreciate that. Let's take someone else. Hi there. Good evening. Welcome. Good evening, sir. Godfrey. How are you doing, my brother? Fine, sir. This is Bolahon calling. Okay, Bolahon. So good to hear. Where are you calling from, Bolahon? Ajata. Okay. Ajata. Okay. Uh, um, please, uh, permit me to speak to um, Adaize. Adaize, she can hear you. Good evening, Adaize. Good evening. Uh, yeah, this is Bella. I, want, uh, I was one that won 10,000 on Thursday, but I sent my data, but there was no sign that you guys read my uh, the data that I sent to you. Okay, Bola uh, we, we, I'm, I'm going to send it again. Please check. Please. All right, Next Bola thing. Please, if it's you, it we, we always keep the record. Thank you very much, Balahon. Adeze, please check for Balahon, I beg you. Hi there, good evening and welcome. Thanks for joining us. Hello, good evening. Okay, tell me. Yes, please, talk to us. Uh, my name is Ethan Godin. I'm coming from Lekin. Ethan Godin. Okay, welcome. I, okay, I want to talk about the Nittas who uh, need to cover. We are so listening to I, I I see trouble coming because, you know, he's how Chelsea started and then City joined the, the queue and then now Newcastle again. So I think football in England now is going to become more harder and then more interesting. Hmm. So, I'm a bit worried about because it's now top four. All right. Top four now is a bit hard now. And then, yes, Nicholas is now coming in now. I see a, a lot of, you know, struggling getting the top four. But, how do you think? Uh, I wouldn't care because it will make football fun. You okay. know, and, and then, it will, it will open up the whole of the Premier League and it will see a lot of surprise as well. So, Thank- so man, you, I don't know I don't know what are they waiting for to let this man go. We'll have that com- we'll have that conversation inside nine o'clock. Okay, thank you very very much. I mean, guys, um, Adesi had mentioned it. Uh, the concern 
Um, is there somebody on the line right now? Let's let's take that. We'll come we'll come back to that. Okay. So the concern now that there could be pressure on some of the bigger clubs who are not doing so well to sell. The fans could mount pressure. I, I foresee a situation where if in two seasons Newcastle begin to look like they are going to win the Champions League before Arsenal, or they are going to pick a Premier League trophy or two before Arsenal, there will be tremendous pressure on some of these clubs to sell, 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 sell to anybody who has the money. Uh, you know, is, is that a concern? I don't think it is um, because for these clubs, their their valuations are so so. For Arsenal, yeah. Arsenal valued at about a billion pounds mm. right now. I honestly don't see anybody paying a billion pounds. Um, Do the fans care? That Arsenal are worth a billion and they can't win anything. So the thing is, and I respect Benga and what he feels about Newcastle fans. Um, I don't think the fans have as much say as they think they do mm. in today's football. I, I honestly don't think so. So the fans will make noise. Social media has now, you know, put a loudspeaker on the voices of, of football fans. But a lot of times it ends there. The owners do exactly what it is they want to do. So if nobody matches the valuation of the existing owner, then nobody buys the club. And at the moment, are we are we close to seeing a one billion pounds club? I don't think so. Newcastle bought for about three hundred million. Roman bought Chelsea for two hundred million in two thousand three. Mm. So maybe a hundred million increase in, in average valuation in like twenty years. I don't think we're close to seeing that. So um, is there any impending you know pressure on any existing top club to sell? I honestly don't think so, and I don't think the fans have the power to do that. that there's also there's also the, the the fact that football clubs are generally not as valuable as we think they are. They do not turn profits most of the time, mm. so you do not. It's not. It's they're not, not as every profitable, but they are valuable. They are valuable. They are not profitable, but they are definitely valuable. So most of the profit you will get is when you sell at the tail end of everything. Mm-hmm. So Silvio, Silvio Berlusconi, for instance, bought AC Milan in '87 and didn't sell until four years ago. But he didn't turn a profit until the day Finn Invest completed the deal with Young Hong Lee. So, with many clubs, Chelsea turned the profit last year, but there are not many Premier League clubs who did because it was there was coronavirus. Mm-hmm. Clubs in Italy are not doing too well. In Spain, it's even worse. In Germany, they are doing fine, but then there's the 50 plus 1 rule over there. So, um, there's, not, there's, not a, there's a lot of bottlenecks in clusters that keep billionaires from investing in football as it were if the motive was to make money mm-hmm. you know uh Spezia was born was bought last year for 25 million there's a lot of value in that deal because you can always sell for a higher amount and mm-hmm. turn a profit the lower the cheaper the club mm-hmm. per se the easier it, it is to turn sense. yeah the easier it is to turn profit which is why it surprises me more that newcastle would cost this much mm. There's a conversation that hasn't really been heard. Uh, and that conversation is, so, whether we like it or not, um, behind the individuals, the billionaires, the, the, the businesses, companies who buy these big football clubs, there's a government. There's usually a government. Um, the, the thought is, how, we look at national team football. Now, I want to say this vis-a-vis the fact that FIFA are now making a push to have the World Cup played, played every two years. Yeah. Um, almost everyone else hates it. But they are looking at it. Is that one of the things, as valuable as the World Cup is, if it were played every two years, um, potentially, maybe they think it could lead to more turnover, monies and all of that. Club football thinks, will probably think it, it's more competition for club football for the Champions League and all of that. It takes everything away. I, I, I'm, where I'm going is, potentially, could some of these inter- this c- countries um, invest some of these monies in their local product? If, for instance, the World Cup becomes an every two-year affair, and we've seen some countries do it to good effect. There was a time Switzerland literally had a United Nations team. We've seen the French, we've seen the Germans uh, populate their teams with, with uh, um, a, a, a collection, some, sometimes a popuri of individuals of all um, shades and colors. So, so, again, in today's world, it, sometimes it even looks beautiful. Could the Saudi Arabia, for instance, pick some of the best legs in Africa uh, and some of the best legs in, in some parts of um, maybe South America and uh, 
which which country now has a team made up almost of all Brazilians now? There's a country. I think Ukraine has a policy uh, uh, yeah, of, I, in, of bringing you know, Ukraine you know, a lot half, of half of Shakhtar's team. You know, you know a, a prospective Brazilians. Ukrainian Ukrainian. And yes, do, do you see, it's very normal. Do, do you see something yeah. forming there that uh, you know in? Um, uh, international football could go that way uh, and maybe these guys could look at it we know why they invest in these clubs in these leagues do you understand um but is there something there about the national teams is there a handshake do you see anything not as much hmm. um and my reason is that with club football club football is every three days yeah right um you watch City today you watch PSG tomorrow hmm. you watch Newcastle next tomorrow mm -hmm. and then after Newcastle the next day you're watching City again you know so I think that it gives them a whole lot more um, leverage yeah. to build equity, you know. So, um, for businessmen and for these countries who, even though they are not businesses, right, they are also they are selling something. They are mm -hmm. selling themselves. They also have to, to build equity. With, with the World Cup, even if the World Cup comes every two years, right, you play the World Cup in the summer and mm -hmm. then it's until, you know, another two years in the summer before you play the World Cup, you know. So, I, I, I honestly don't see it, but then... I mean, play I, I don't qualifiers, have... the penultimate year, it's it's just going to be too much. You know? No, so, so the qualifiers, based on the plans that Wenger has been carrying all over the world now, mm -hmm, the qualifiers mm -hmm. are now going to be happening in like one cycle, like maybe they'll pick a month in November. Everybody plays the qualifiers in... So my question is, the qualifiers is like another World Cup, right? You know, so... Exactly. But again, um, my my opinion might be wrong because I don't have a billion dollars to, to spend. <laughs> so I don't know. But I honestly don't see the I don't see the leverage with international football. But if it happens, if that proposed plan happens, then I think the scenario you painted uh, will definitely. Uh, we'll, 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 you know, we'll yeah. begin we we'll begin to you know. see it because <laughs> I mean, countries' prestige, uh, pride, they will want to be competitive by any means. So if it means buying the whole of Africa. Uh, to play for you then so then we'll be well so then we'll be yeah. we'll be bothering a little bit on yeah. human trafficking a little yeah. bit i think here's why i think why that won't happen you see fifa has put in place certain guardrails against Come players on, fifa move. well i know but, but even, rela even a broken clock is is correct twice yeah. in a day now they're the probably going to relax it in a, in a year well the, the thing is for now for now you as a player born in another country cannot play for a different nationality whatever your ties are until age 23 right mm -hmm. so if, if if you play say you were born in nigeria grew up in england you can only change your your nationality before age 23 once that is up and you have pil and you've played a certain amount of games for that national team you can't switch anymore mm -hmm. so these are things that are in place that you know will keep players from mm -hmm. moving as much as if you check the french national team and all these teams that have a multicolor um um setup many of them have players who were born there raised there or spent a significant amount of their life there to become national team players so it's different with club football club football you bring the money an agent runs the deal and then you are you are moving to another country all of a sudden so mm. it's not it's not that simple mm. Interesting perspective. So we can't see the uh, Brazilian playing, f the Vandresa FC Brazilian playing for <laughs> Super Eagles <laughs> anytime soon. Yeah, 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 it's po that's possible because whoever, whatever Brazilian player will come down to Nigeria to play, I mean, no offense, mm -hmm. will come down to Nigeria to play, never had a chance, even with the Uruguayan national team mm -hmm. in the first place. Wow. Oh, there are some who would argue with you. What do you think? Let's go back to the phone lines. Uh, 0700 993 993 993 our ladies only line 01465 7190 we're wrapping up this conversation we'll close this conversation in about three four minutes hi there good evening welcome good evening Benny yes and please the gang. talk to us brother yeah my name is Suleiman calling from Papa. welcome Suleiman I just raise your voice I'm fine now. Good evening. All right. Good, 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 good. Yeah. Um, I want to talk about uh, Newcastle. Hmm. I think Newcastle is another Man City. Way bigger than Man City for now. Because I believe all these big time agents now have now diverted their attention gradually to that Newcastle. Some people are saying, some people are saying the next uh, uh, 10 years or 5 years, they see Newcastle going nowhere. Hmm. Man, check out next year. 
Because that's why that's why I want my darling Chris to grab something before you see it. Because it's going to be a <laughs> it's going to be a tough one. Because many players will not will now start coming to that new classroom. Okay. Thank you very yeah. much for your perspective. We really highly value it and appreciate it. Uh, we've lost that. Uh, let's see if we could take... Uh... Hello, how are you? Hello. Yes, please. Welcome, brother. Are you still there? Yeah, this is Olatun Said calling from Odi. Welcome, welcome. Welcome, Olatun Said. Yeah. yeah, talk to us. I'm very, very, I'm, I'm very happy to contribute to, uh, to this program. I'm happy I'm to. I'm a Newcastle fan for a long time. Whoa. Yes. That's good. Excellent. I'm a big fan of Newcastle for a long time. My friend used to have make, 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 make guests of me, but I just remained here. Mm. But what, with, with what is happening now, I'm very, very happy that our club is going to be competing with but, the But, but why of, Newcastle? Uh, how, long, how long have you been a fan and why? Why Newcastle? I just decided my mind that time, most especially when um, this Nigeria guy was playing here, uh, Shola Amiobi. Okay. So since then I've been the fans of. And that then eventually show. Martins played there. Who else yes, played there? Exactly. Babayaro. Babayaro played there. Yes, Babayaro as well. So yeah. I'm very, very happy. I'm very, very happy. My friend, now they were just you know looking at me. I'm telling them that come next season, we also are going to coach the number one year in the Premiership. Hmm. So next I'm season. very, very happy this night. <laughs> Interesting. So thank you, sir. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Thank you very. Uh, let's take one final call for the road. We gotta go. Hello, good evening. Hello, good yes, evening. Yes, please. Let's hear from you. Yeah, good evening, Femi, and everyone. Appreciate you in joining the studio. us. Yeah. Yeah. My name is uh, Margaret. Welcome, Margaret. Yeah. Um, I want to talk about the Newcastle. In fact, what is going on in England right now? Um, you know, money bags, buying clothes, you know, home stuff, and all that, pumping money into clothes. Mm. Well, it's all good. It's going to make competition in England more stronger. But um, the other part is going to be that the, the other clubs that don't actually have a um, um, sugar daddy, let me go with right David's word, um, to, to pump him money into their clubs, they do not look um, like somehow. You know, the whole thing is just going to be like the proposed um, Super League, um, Super League that was collapsed. So it's going to be more like that. You'll see clubs like Norway struggling. Uh, they won't have money to buy players. you see clubs like, uh, probably like Brentford. Uh, you see them coming, um, even Crystal Palace. They'll be like looking up to these guys. Wow, how are we going to survive with all the money in here? But I wish, but it's all good though, it's all good. And like you said, um, it's my, the club, the fans will, at one point or the other, one, uh, one, one day probably propel the club to get um, a rich um, buyer to buy the club to pump in so that they can compete with the top guys. And I, pray, and I pray that one day also they will do the same for maybe any of the Nigerian um, team clubs in mm. the SPFL or probably just the same money bag just coming in, pumping money into, uh, into the Nigeria NPSL, all the teams and then the start seeing something good coming out from the FPL also at least they can you know mm. help shoulders with the Europeans um, team abroad thank, thank you, you very much. much Margaret highly appreciated I'm sure most Nigerians wouldn't care if Xi Jinping mm. bought Aimba or or, <laughs> or, or, or or Rangers or or any of our teams Shooting. for that matter up shooting uh, and um but interesting conversation we've had. I, I really love the pers uh, perspective. I, I, I don't want to be one of those jealous fans. Newcastle, uh, um, Newcastle, Newcastle for Newcastle, potentially great times lie ahead for Ben Gaborowa, uh, Bragging rights, potentially mouth. Uh -huh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, bragging yeah. rights potentially. <laughs> you still have to escape relegation this season, mm. and 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 then uh, pick a trophy. Uh, pick a trophy, perhaps in the next two, three seasons. At least pick something, it, whether it's Carlin's Cup or, or... We just want to be competitive and play fine football. And, 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 and then yeah. just be there. Just just be seen as as 
as as a competitor, uh, as uh, be, be to, as a contender. Yes. You know that, that that would be that would be. I mean, our only bragging right before t uh, the consortium took over was we're the biggest club in the northeast. We're bigger <laughs> than Sunderland and Notts County. So so you can't wait to say we're the biggest club in the world. In the world, yes, and it's coming soon. It's hard because yeah. you know, <laughs> I, I mean, neither City nor Chelsea nor uh, PSG nor all these clubs that have had the huge infusions mm -hmm. of money have been able to lay claim to any of those titles. It's, it's still Madrid and United and Barcelona. Our own portion will be d different, yes. Well, you, you, your own money and purse <laughs> is different. From, moving from also runs to Nouveau Rich overnight. Mm. Also runs. Mm. That was their former status, but now they're in the Nouveau Rich category. Mm. Congrats. Thank it, you very much. Interesting stuff. Well, however you look at it, uh, some really interesting times lay ahead. Wale, as always, um, uh, you know, you won't, you won't find much keener minds uh, discussing football uh, anywhere uh, than yours. Your, your insights were, were, were really, really great. I'm, I was just going to, uh, before we close this chapter, I'm just going to ask you this one question because Margaret did mention it in our conversation. Do you think this whole Super League thing will come back? You think it's dead in the water? No, I think it'll come back. I think it will definitely there's, an, uh, there's some inevitability about it, isn't it? Yeah, is I mean, the, the Premier League was born out of some people thinking they wanted to create the Super League. I don't know if men, enough people. The, the Premier know. League in '92 was born out of people saying we should create, and the name of the person who started was David Dean, the former Arsenal vice chairman. Yeah, you that, know, so you know, I, I, I was I, I was privileged to have a conversation with him a okay. couple of years back, and, and we had this conversation here in this studio, uh, and. Yeah, he alluded to it. Yeah, you, you know, know so he, was saying he was the father of he himself is actually the father of the Premier League as we know it now. Yeah. So, so the thing is, as long as people keep investing billions and billions and billions of dollars into football, right, mm -hmm. and then some group of people think that they will continue to have sole control on the game, then these investors will again, like I said earlier at the start, the monies of these investors drive the passion that we enjoy today. Mm -hmm. All the fans who are saying up Chelsea, up Man U, it's because somebody is spending billions of dollars. Abramovich has spent over 1 billion pounds at Chelsea, mm. right? Uh, Barcelona in about 1.3 billion euros of debt. These guys want to recoup their funds. If I put 100 naira in a business, right? What I'm thinking about is my ROI. What, 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 I mean, what return do I mm -hmm. get? So if there's a competition that guarantees return on my investment, I don't think these people honestly really care about the integrity of the sport. Mm. These guys just want to make their money back, you know. So, um, I honestly think the Super League will come back in whether this form, whether another format, but it's coming back. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for this conversation. Benga, amazing to have you in the studios again after almost half a decade. You are awesome. Uh, keep shining. Thank you very much for the opportunity. It was an absolute pleasure. And, and much respect to, to the friends and, and, and you guys are doing well. Uh, um, New Central, doing absolutely well. Thank you very much. I got my eye on you. Yeah, uh, I'll, <laughs> I'll send your regards to everyone. Certainly, yeah. certainly. Uh, um, so, yes, what are for part two? There's, there's, there's a whole nother conversation to be had um, as regards um, uh, um, this conversation. It involves some data. It, it's some, it involves, we touched on it a little bit, the, the, pro, the political side of things. There's much to look forward to and, and it, it's, it's, a, it's an ongoing process uh, and that conversation will not end. Uh, thank you guys uh, for this uh, amazing night. We'll take a break. When we come back, Sam has got all this interesting stuff about Ole united and that and there's something on on david beckham uh, that sam wants us to talk about uh, um uh, uh, some in you know some individuals some groups wanting him to speak out what against who against uh, you'll get to hear that as this broadcast continues you are on to 99.3 nigeria info we are femi and the gang will leave you with Newcastle's home song, Coming Home. Who knows? Maybe Glory is coming home to Newcastle this time round. We're winning the treble next season. <laughs> 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 